Okay, I'm going to begin showing that functions are additive or showing that functions are not additive pretty soon. But before I do, let's review the definition of additivity, the property additivity. Uh, function f has this property of additivity. That is to say, a function f is additive if for any two things in its domain, we'll call them x and y, uh, f of x plus y is equal to f of x plus f of y. Now that might not have much meaning to you right now, but that's uh, the idea of going through these exercises to give that a bunch of meaning to you. Um, so I wanted to first make a list of characters in the story of showing that a function is additive. Uh, certainly x will be a character in the story. And the thing that f turns x into, f of x, is a character in this story also. Now, uh, y, I'm going to write in blue, and f of y, the thing that f turns y into, is also a character in the story. Next, x plus y appears in this equation, and f turns that object, x plus y, into something, so that is yet another character in the story. And there is another character, and that is the sum of these two guys, f of x plus f of y. And if the sum of these two guys is the same as that, that is, if the red thing is the same as the green thing, then we have linearity. But um, there is a, an additional issue I want to bring up before we get started with these problems, and that is the difference between showing that a function is linear and showing that a function is not linear to, or I'm sorry, replace the word linear with additive there. If you want to show that a function is not additive. Okay, then it is sufficient. Okay, to show that this equality is not true for a particular, I'm sorry, I'm speaking faster than I'm writing. Show the equality is a false statement for some particular. x and y. Now, by particular, I mean you can choose particular numbers or particular vectors, whatever is appropriate to the situation, whatever the domain of uh, the function dictates. Okay, so that word particular is important and sufficient is also important. To show that a function is linear, uh, sorry, is additive, which is half of linearity, It's necessary to show the equality is true in for all x and y. And this language takes some getting used to, but I'm going to use the word arbitrary. and give all of these things meaning in just a second here. Huh? Uh, okay. Let me begin by trying to show that some function is not additive. It will end up the function actually is additive. But I will try to uh, well, I'll examine additivity for a function for particular x and y. So here in 29a, we have a function f that assigns to x the number 3x, or arbitrary number x. Now, I'm going to pick two particular x values. Okay, I'm going to choose negative 2 to be x and 3 to be y. So those are particular choices. Okay. 
Then, uh, if f of x assigns to x 3x, then it assigns to a y 3y. And f um, of the sum negative 2 plus 3, well, that's 3 times negative 2 plus 3. And f of negative 2 plus f of 3, well, that's the sum of these two things. Okay? And you can see that they're equal. Okay? Now, so, hmm, let's see. You know what I'll do is I'll say which is equivalent to f of negative 2 plus 3 is equal to, what is this, uh, 3, right? And this right here, f of negative 2 plus f of 3. And let me just do the arithmetic real sure to make sure, uh, real quick to make sure that I've got everything right. This is a 9 minus 6, so that also is 3. So, that is to say, I just found that f of x plus y is equal to f of x plus f of y for the particular values. Two, negative two, and three for x and y, respectively. OK. So you see how I examined this for um, just a particular pair of numbers? Now let me also draw a picture to help, under help you understand what's going on. I've drawn a copy of the number line right here because the domain of f take is the set of all numbers. And so f takes in a number like negative 2, right? f of negative 2 appeared right there. Uh, so in analogy to what I wrote over here, I'm going to draw one of the numbers, x, in black, and its image also in black. Okay, so I've drawn the thing that I treated as x, uh, negative 2, in black. And I'm going to treat its, uh, its image, the thing it gets mapped to under f, the thing f turns negative 2 into, also in black. f of x is negative 6 when x is 2. So that's 0 right there. So I've drawn an arrow going from the origin uh, to here. Now. Again, sticking with my convention here, I also draw the thing that I used as y, which was um, 3, and f of y, um, which was 9, I believe, in blue. So in blue, well, I suppose I need a black pen to get some tick marks. 1, 2, 3, out here at 3, I'm going to draw what is f of x this vector in blue from the origin out to 3. Okay. No, ah, darn it. That was supposed to be just x. All right, x, uh, no. Oh, man. All right, sorry. Senior moment. That was meant to be y. And then f of y, that is uh, f of 3, was 9. Let's go out to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, and in blue, I'm going to draw f of y, a vector going out to 9. Represent it as an arrow. All right, and then I've got some more drawings to go. In green, I was going to do x plus y and f of x plus y. Green doesn't show up very well, so I'll try to make everything really dark. Uh, x plus y, that's 1. And so I'll try to make my green arrow here really, really dark. Here, I'll even fill in the head of the arrow. And the image of that, f of x plus y, that was 3. Okay. So f of x plus y out there at uh, 1, 2, 3. Right, that's dictated by the value of x plus y. x plus y actually is 1, so f of x plus y is f of 1. And that is this green arrow right there. It's going to be our visual representation of this guy. 
All right, now, wouldn't it be a miracle if there was a relationship between f of x and f of y and f of x plus y? Well, remember in red we had yet another thing we were going to draw, the sum of f of x and f of y. And let's take a look at what that is, the sum of negative 6 and 9. Well, that happens to be 3. So in this case, I got a, uh, another line that I'm going to draw in red. And red, well, maybe I'll draw it this way just so it seems to uh, appear. That red arrow is right on top of the green arrow. The red arrow and the green arrow are the same. That is to say, f of x plus f of y is f of x plus y. OK, now to recap, I have examined whether this equation right here is true for particular values of x and y. But uh, that's what you do when you're trying to show that something is not linear. I failed to show that this thing was not linear. So I start to suspect that it's linear. And you might have sus suspected that from the beginning. To show that it is linear, I need to talk about uh, an arbitrary x and y. So I'll say similarly. For arbitrary numbers x uh, and y, and I could put a comma there or an ampersand for and, um, f of x plus y is 3 times x plus y the thing inside of the argument of the function. And f of x plus f of y is 3 times x plus 3 times y. All right, then I can, um, I mean, you can probably already see that these two things are equal. But just to drive the point home, we can say f of x plus y is, um, well, how would we like to express it? 3x plus 3y. All I've done there is uh, distribute. And now I've got this to look exactly like that. Um, and I can conclude. So f is additive. Right? Because this equality right here, uh, let's see, f is additive. f of x plus y is equal to f of x plus f of y for arbitrary elements of the domain of f, which uh, are numbers x and y. Okay. And you can see that holding right here for a particular pair of numbers, x, y, negative 2, and 3. You could draw the same kind of picture for any pair of numbers, um, though the picture might uh, involve um, longer segments of the number line. OK, now you may be wondering a variety of things, like how, what it looks like to show that a function is not additive. Of course, that's going to be the next video.